It is indeed a great honor and an absolute pleasure to introduce our weaver, weavers uh, to a very unique person. Professor Stephen Lewis uh, from Allentown, USA, is a household name in neurology. I'll tell you how. Uh, let me go back to 2002 as I was uh, trying to enter into neurology from Christchurch Hospital, New Zealand. At that time, our training program was limited to one trainee for the whole country. And we absolutely had no sort of formal training program. At that, this is not a criticism. I'm just telling you the ground truth at that time. I realized that there, was, there were a lot of opportunities in Australia, but not in New Zealand. But of course, New Zealand has produced great neurologists uh, even before that, so I wasn't going to give up. But then I realized that if you become a member of American Academy of Neurology, you get to see this journal called Gold Journal, which is continual. Obviously, I paid, uh, I remember, 130 New Zealand dollars at that time to become a junior member of Academy, American Academy of Neurology, purely for the Gold Journal, which I was getting free at that time. Here is the here is the king of uh, that journal who is basically editing it and uh, the World Federation of Neurology membership very well know that uh, American Academy of Neurology has a partnership with World Federation of Neurology to offer this free for a large number of neurologists uh, globally uh, and many countries actually rely on their continuous medical education uh, purely from continuum. So this is the person who is behind that to work hard uh, tirelessly and he's also one of our trustees. I can go on talking about him for hours, which I'm not going to do. Uh, very warm welcome to Steve. Uh, thank you for making time, uh, despite your busy schedule, to support World Brain Day campaign. How are you today? I'm good, Tissa. Thank you so much for having me. And I really appreciate that introduction. And I'm so glad you've enjoyed Continuum through your career, because I do too. So thank you. And I, I continue to use that and I continue to advocate uh, many residents all over the world uh, to become uh, members uh, because you get to get to access that. Uh, Steve, uh, the, let us uh, hear your journey uh, to, to this uh, level. Uh, you are a global leader now. How did uh, this all become? When did you become interested in neurology? Was it at high school, medical school? accidentally, or was there a particular mentor who inspired you to get into neurology at a, at a younger age? Well, thanks for that great question. So I really didn't know anything about neurology in high school, college, uh, or even medical school until my second year of medical school. Um, when I took this course, course called neuroanatomy, and I didn't really know what neuroanatomy was, but when I did take it, which was a required course, I realized I loved it. I, I, I found it incredibly interesting. I didn't know anything about it prior to taking it. Uh, I, I heard a little bit about it and thought, you know, that people didn't like it and it was difficult, but somehow it came kind of easy to me and I enjoyed it. And I read more and more outside of class. And I realized very quickly, frankly, that, that this was what I wanted to be. So it was really my love for my neuroanatomy class that made me realize how much I wanted to become a clinical neurologist. So I actually wanted to become a clinical neurologist after my second year of medical school neuroanatomy class, even before I did any uh, clinic, clinical uh, medicine or clinical neurology. And, and thankfully, when I did do my clinical neurology rotation, I liked it as much as I thought I would. But, but it really was neuroanatomy that turned me on to, to the process of, ne of neurology, which is really what I think neurology really is all about. And the, tell, us, tell us how you became involved with the Continuum. The, how did this come about? That's a, that's a very good question as well. So I, early in my academic career, I started getting involved in writing questions uh, for what's called the National Board of Medical Examiners, which is uh, the, the organization that creates uh, tests for medical students before they get um, uh, uh, licensed in, in the United States. So sure, I got on some writing question writing committees, and I, I thought I was I think I was pretty good at it. And I was in a group of some neurologists who got involved in a number of question writing committees. And ultimately, because of that, I got asked to become a question writer for Continuum with about seven other neurologists. And so I wrote questions for various issues of Continuum, and that's how I got to know the editorial staff and the editor. And 
somehow they uh, nicely they asked me to join the editorial board probably 15 16 17 years ago something like that and it was through my work on the board that i got more involved the, the editorial board of continuum I got more involved in continuum and then finally there was a um uh, a a call for uh, 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 people who wanted to become the next editor-in-chief. I was actually, I, I had actually become the associate editor at that time from my involvement in the editorial board. And I applied to be the editor. And uh, uh, to my uh, uh, surprise uh, and luck, I, I did get asked to become the, the next editor. So now I've been the editor for eight years. Now I've, a year and a half or two years to go. And it's gone by very, very quickly, frankly. It, it is, it is uh, such a gem. I think we both uh, should uh, remind uh, the great uh, late uh, Ted Munsat, uh, uh, who was a pioneer in education at this point of time. I had the uh, good fortune of uh, becoming the first uh, Ted Munsat uh, award recipient uh, in collaboration with my good friend uh, Walter Skruhal, which I got from your hand and Professor Grisol hands at uh, 2017 Kyoto meeting. Uh, so the, let's uh, let's remember his great contribution for global neurology at this point of time. Uh, I'll, I'll ask a couple of other questions on continuum also. We, I'm not sure whether you are legally obliged to not answer this question, but I'm happy to withdraw that uh, if that is the case. It is such a gem for a practicing neurologist uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, you and me both know that uh, the, when the problems are universal, uh, solutions are also universal. Uh, the, uh, how, how do you produce uh, this uh, the targeted uh, material, synthesizing a particular question that is really useful for a trainee neurologist as well as a practicing neurologist uh, uh, with a very quick reference? Uh, they can translate that to top notch, uh, uh, the highest level care for their patients. Uh, what is in your head uh, when you invite a particular uh, the, the writer or author? to contribute to a volume? Do you have sort of a specific prescription or, or the, the, how do you produce these sort of gems uh, here, uh, the volume of volume? Well, thank you for asking that question too, Tessa. So let me talk a little bit about the process of the continuum uh, issues, if you will. So continuum is uh, six issues per year and it's in a three-year cycle. So in every three years there are 18 issues of which 15 of them are what we call core topics like stroke, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, movement disorders, and so on. And three are what we call non-core topics. For example, neurology of pregnancy wouldn't exist in every three-year cycle, but it would be a typical non-core topic in some three-year cycles. Neurotology is another one we did recently. But in any case, in the, if we think about the core topics, you know, stroke, movement disorders, and so on, uh, we have a, first of all, I choose what's called a guest editor, and that person helps me uh, decide, I, the guest editor and I work together to decide what the topics are going to be in that issue. And my rule of thumb is when the new continuum issue comes out, the last one no longer exists. Now, of course, it still exists on your shelf and or on your computer and or on your phone uh, or on your iPad. But, but typically, the new issue is going to supersede any previous issue. So I tell the guest editor was to come up with those 10 or 12 topics uh, or, or articles, uh, which some people call chapters, but they are articles, um, to think about everything a practicing neurologist would need to know about movement disorders or stroke or epilepsy. So even if it was covered in the last uh, issue, and it should have been covered in the last issue, but the new issue absolutely takes the place of the old one. And this issue should have everything that a neurologist needs to know about it at this time. Whether it's old information or new information, it's not just an update, it's the information one needs. Um, so, we, so the guest editor and I choose those 10 or 12 articles. Uh, the guest editor chooses the authors for that article. I have a very firm rule of thumb that the authors should be experts in the field, not residents, not fellows. Residence fellows are very, very important readers of Continuum, as are all practicing neurologists, but the writers of the articles really should be real experts with lots of clinical expertise and experience in those, uh, in those topics. Before, uh, after we choose the, um, uh, the authors, uh, we have a, a conference call with all the authors, and that's where I tell them exactly what you're saying, was I, I give the guest center and all the authors sort of the, my, um, worldview of what Continuum is. And Continuum is actually, in my mind, in, uh, a journal, a review article journal for neurologists 
in practice, seeing lots and lots of patients. And of course, what a neurologist in practice like you and I need to know is no different than what a, uh, a neurologist in training needs to know. We're all seeing the same kinds of patients and the same kinds of problems. Uh, it's written at the level of the practicing neurologist, which again, is the, pra- the level of any neurologist. So, so to make a long story short, I do communicate to the guest editor and communicate to the authors of each article who the audience is and, um, and, and what this is all about. And it's not just an update. It's everything anyone would need to know. Even if every previous I- issue uh, no longer existed, this issue should be the one that should stand on its own as the, uh, as the important current information uh, about that topic. Thank you, Steve. You know that the World Brain Day uh, is not necessarily about uh, educating neurologists uh, on a particular disease in depth. Uh, World Federation Neurology both World Brain Day concept to raise profile and raise awareness of brain disorders uh, globally. You would agree as a senior trustee that World Brain Day has really taken the momentum worldwide now since 2014. This year in the middle of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we choose uh, a key issue in relation, in related, relation to neuroinflammation with the ambitious agenda to stop multiple sclerosis, uh, partnering with the Multiple Sclerosis International Federation. How excited are you to see our eighth World Brain Day is dedicated to multiple sclerosis and an almost a year long advocacy campaign is running globally at this point of time. I think this is uh, uh, really, first of all, World Brain Day has been just a terrific uh, uh, endeavor since it began. This is the eighth one, is that correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, so, so the eighth World Brain Day, uh, it's gotten bigger each time. It's always, as you know, devoted to a topic, but really neurology in general and brain diseases in general. And I think this particular topic, of course, is incredibly important. Uh, multiple sclerosis is such a common illness and also other related diseases like neuromyelitis optica and other, other diseases that can present kind of similarly. But these are very, very, very important diseases that strike people uh, throughout their life, but particularly uh, relatively young people at the prime of their life. Um, and I think bringing attention to diseases like MS and other diseases as well, but also bringing together all of our uh, regional and uh, national organizations to uh, uh, inform physicians and uh, probably most important, the public uh, about these important diseases and brain health in general is incredibly important. And uh, uh I'm so pleased at what you've done, uh, Tissa, in, in bringing World Brain Day uh, to the forefront and making it so successful. And I'm so pleased to be involved in it. And it's really exciting every year to see uh, how, how big it gets and how, how, how excited uh, everyone gets uh, being involved in it. And I, you know, as you know, I'm also involved in a, a journal called World Neurology, which is the um, official newsletter, if you will, not really a journal, but a newsletter of the, American, of the <laughs> World Federation of Neurology. But every year after World Brain Day, putting together these articles, uh, uh, showing the massive efforts these regional societies have done and national societies have done, uh, and uh, uh, all the, just the wonderful kinds of events that people have done, bringing um, uh, uh, oh. and information and uh, 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 um, advocacy uh, about these illnesses and neurological disorders in general is really quite exciting. Thank you. I was going to talk about world neurology also. You would, you would be probably surprised to hear that uh, my first author article I actually submitted and published in World Neurology. Mark Hallett was the editor at that time. I remember vividly that uh, it was uh, a book review on uh, a neurological examination. I was a young neurologist at that time, and I emailed Mark uh, uh, saying that uh, I read this book. I really like it. It really is the cure for neurophobia in my mind. Uh, and do you think uh, the world neurology would support uh, a book review? Mark being Mark, he emailed me within a few hours. Of course, he suggested uh, write it uh, in, in this way and with uh, minimum edits, it got published. Uh, although oh, that's great. Right. That's great. Right. Although I published a few thousand segments in Sri Lanka as a young medical student in local science journals, this is different. This is a global publication. This is like a Women's Weekly for Neurologists 
and uh, I got a really big kick to having seen the the printed edition at that time. We got a printed copy <laughs> also at that time. You wouldn't believe. Since then, I have put together almost two hundred manuscripts now to various journals. Uh, so it's amazing that uh, what uh, one publication does to you. I think I didn't tell my story to the the, the the elaborate on me. I think I want viewers to know how critically important for you to submit your work uh, to World Neurology. And Steve is a great editor, and he is very supportive to publish your publication. And you can easily break my record. Maybe you can publish three hundred manuscripts uh, within 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 ten years. Uh, so let's hope that uh, our viewers. Uh, Specifically, your fan base, continuum readers, and world neurology readers would post something, do some activity on World Brain Day, and not only that, uh, they take some photos from their smartphone or keep a little video record and submit it to World Neurology. So I hope that you will get one million submissions uh, this year for the World Brain <laughs> Day. Exhausting, oh, real work. So let's let's hope our colleagues would bring it on. Thank you for your great work uh, in World Neurology, also. I should, you, also, I should also remind viewers that Steve is also the Education Committee Chair for World Federation Neurology since 2014. So thank you for your uh, immense uh, work with uh, huge impact uh, globally also. Steve, to change the, 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 the path a little bit um, uh, further, now people might realize that uh, you do nothing other than writing things uh, and uh, seeing patients. Uh, but you are a decent human being. You are married with children, and you are a family man. Tell us uh, uh, your your time uh, outside neurology. Uh, the how do you spare time when you get a break? Well, I do spend a lot of time editing continuum. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, so, so my time outside neurology is editing. But I do have, as, as you mentioned, I'm married. Uh, I have my wife Julie. I have four uh, four children, all boys, age I think uh, 21 through. 31, um, uh, and and of course I love uh, being being with being with my family. I do like going to movies when 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 that comes back. I do I do like that. Um, but really, for the last ten years, I have to be honest. When you're editing a, a publication like Continuum, every free second is. Uh, is 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 uh, uh, not free. <laughs> you, you have to get that editing done. So so the light is light at the end of the tunnel. But uh, but I'm not complaining. It's 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 been fun. Steve, here is a here is a little hint uh, for a very nice movie. I think it is available through Netflix. It's an Indian movie. It's called The Sky Is Pink, but it has English subtitles. It's based on a, a medical disorder and a real story. A beautiful, inspiring story. I would strongly recommend uh, you to watch it with Julie one of these days. Uh, I'll, I'll I will check it out. Thank you. I'll, say, I'll send you the link. Uh, uh, I watched it with my wife recently and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's very inspiring, specifically uh, this sort of a time uh, while we are all in, in the middle of pandemic. To finish off, Steve, uh, what is your message to youngsters uh, out there, whether they are in sub-Saharan Africa or uh, the, the most uh, sort of furthest area in uh, Asia, Oceania or Europe or Americas, uh, south or north, uh, whether they are from a uh, well-to-do city or resource-limited city, uh, what is your message to young medical students and uh, potential future uh, neurology trainees and neurologists in particular, so the covering all crowd? Uh, what is your so, 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 I, so I think my advice is, is fo follow your heart. I mean, whether you're going to neurology or some other specialty, go into that area of medicine, whether, again, neurology is great, but that area of medicine that really you found interesting, as I mentioned to you, Tissa, when I um, discovered neurology, it became clear to me that that was how I was going to spend my life. Uh, I, I really loved it. I loved reading outside of you know, assigned readings. I went out of my way to buy extra books and learn more and more about it. You know, I, I think for all of us, there is that field, whether it's neurology or some subspecialty of neurology or some other field altogether. Once you find that, uh, stick with it. And, and um, it only gets more and more interesting. If you find it interesting, it only gets more and more interesting. And the world is always looking for great clinicians and educators and researchers in 
frankly, any field and in neurology, any part of neurology, any subspecialty in neurology, if you find something you like, you will be successful. And you are looking forward to seeing brain health I get from for, for on behalf of World Neurology, won't you? So the thank you very much, Steve, for your time today. I know that you have a very busy schedule. Thank you for your relentless support for the World Brain Day campaign also. Stay safe and stay well. Uh, finally, the, I would invite uh, all our viewers, uh, specifically in relation to World Brain Day campaign, uh, the, and also anything else related to brain health or neurology, neurosciences from your country, your region, your hospital, your university, please write to World Neurology. That is your uh, the newsletter, if you like. Uh, as I said, it's a, it's a great place to uh, the start uh, your academic career, and it's also a great place to share, even if you are a top-notch top uh, academic uh, neurologist or non-academic neurologist in your country. It's a place where you can share your stories, and we love hearing uh, things from our colleagues from all over the world. Uh, you can find the World Neurology submission email uh, on the World Federation Neurology website. Totally agree. Thank you so much, uh, Steve. Stay safe and stay well, and take care. Thank you, Tissa, you too. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure.